All right. So um, we have a test coming up. Thank you. We have a test on integration. What's on this test is also like just like a quick review of all the things that we've been doing over the last month. Um, and differentiation reporting, finding the area in the curve. So yes, I will give you one of those problems where it's just like, yo, what's the integral from like I don't know, like one to five of um, you know x minus five x squared, and I want you to do it not using the fundamental theorem of calculus, but instead, um, you know, graphing a function, splitting it up into n intervals, drawing rectangles, using RM, and just like cranking it out with like um, summation formulas and everything like that, right? Because it's really what integration is. Good. So you can expect that. There's one of those. Up, well, there's one of those on the review packet, and um, yeah, we had a quiz on it, and it's going to be it's going to be on the test for sure. Okay. What else have we done this unit? Um, we also, uh, so the definition of an integral. So like, just like what an integral is. Um, an integral is the limit of a Riemann sum. So you should understand what Riemann sums are. That's probably going to come up most directly in this packet called, um, there, there was this whole packet called integrals and Riemann sums. Uh, and uh, that packet I thought was kind of hard. Um, so questions like that are going to be on the test, to, at least to some extent. I expect you to be able to look at a re to to give it an integral to write it as a Riemann sum to give it a Riemann sum to write it as an integral. We can go over this a little bit. Um, then uh, let's see what else. Um, uh, what else? Yeah, full period. Um, oh, um, before we learned the fundamental theorem of calculus, we did so-called integrals um, by geometry. That's like when I give you some function, but it turns out that that function is just like a semicircle or something like that, and I ask you to find the integral, but you don't do it via algebra, you just do it by like looking at it and, oh, it's like a trapezoid or whatever. Not vigorously, if you know what I'm talking about. All right, good. So, uh, what an integral is, definition of an integral is a limit of a Riemann sum, Riemann sum, computing Riemann sum, anti partition, integrals by geometry. Then, um, I exploded uh, a new part of your brain, that was Cheyenne, the fundamental theorem of calculus. So that will certainly be something that is important. And um, all the facets of the fundamental theorem of calculus, which includes uh, accumulator functions, um, understanding what accumulator functions are, how they work, uh, asking questions about accumulator functions, blah, blah, blah. And uh, well, FTC, the awesome part, says that the derivative of the uh, integral of a function is that function. I'll also give you those kind of like weird questions where it's like, yo, what's the integral from, or what's the derivative of the integral from like um, 2 to like x cubed of like sine t um, dt? And what's the answer to that? Sine of x cubed back inside? 2x squared. 3x squared. 3x. Oh, I thought it was x squared. Uh, back inside, I'm 3x squared. Um, I will also expect you to be able to um, to reason about accumulator functions. So I made an entire packet called uh, AP Practice Problems on the FTC, AP Practice um, Problems um, on the FTC, yeah. and all and all of those when we did one together in class, I believe. Yeah. So those they'll be. I'm just telling you right now. There's going to be a problem like that on the test. Like exactly like that. All four of those problems are very similar to each other, but the expectations are high as far as you like justifying like why there's a relative max or a relative min or an absolute max or an absolute min. There's also going to be a problem exactly like this on the final exam. There's also going to be a problem exactly like this on the AP exam. So it's really important. Yes. Um, when I'm justifying relative max and mins, what's the sentence I should use? Um, okay, we can get to that in a minute. Um, so this is a. Okay, um, what else What else did we do in this unit? We also, um, uh, we talked about the average value of a function. That was a thing that we did on FTC day. Average value uh, of a function and the mean value theorem for integrals. Yeah, the mean value theorem for integrals. Um, so that's a thing. Uh, and then the last thing, I guess, would be these like net change problems. So, um, so these net, uh, net change problems. So uh, the other part of the fundamental theorem of calculus is that the integral represents the net change. And so, oh, and I guess this other sort of this, this idea of like distance versus displacement. I think this was on the. Is this on the review packet? 
I think so. Did I give you a distance versus displacement problem? I thought I did. Yeah. yeah did. Um, so uh, just understanding that the integral of a velocity curve, for example, is the displacement. But if you want the distance traveled, you need to split up that velocity into the parts where it's positive and the parts where it's negative. OK, um, the net change problems. Uh, this is, there will be a calculator section of this test, a brief, I'm pretty sure, a brief calculator section. So please bring your calculator. And there's going to be one of these like gravel type problems. Okay, so how should you be prepared for this test besides just like generally keeping up with things and like coming to class and doing all your homework and being awake? Um, I would um, do this integral and Riemann sum packet, which was already due like last week. The answer piece up on that now, you should check it. You can also ask me questions about that right now. I would do this entire AP practice problems on the FTC packet, which was also due, I believe, today. Um, and uh, the answer piece up on that line. Then there's a review packet, of course. And I also put the answer key, I think I did, to these net change problems with the, with the snow and the gravel. Is it the answer key up there or no? I think it is, right? Yeah, just yes, yes. What's up? You can Google them also. Or you can yeah. just Google them. Yeah. OK, so here's our plan. Does anyone have any questions about what's going to be on the test, what they're expected, what you need to know? I think this test is, Judy, I would say this test is, um, it's going to be different from some of the previous tests we've had in this class in that it's not going to be, I'm not going to go out of my way to make it really hard, but like the concepts are difficult, right? So there's, there, the, 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 the material is very theoretical and kind of abstract and is of a high level, but the test is not going to be that hard. In other words, like I'm not going to throw crazy weird questions in there or things that are, but like I, there's a lot to know. I think there's a lot. For example, this previous test was pretty mindless, right? This was the opposite of mindless. This is like a, like a, there's like, like a thinking involved. Yes? Are we going to get our other test? Yeah, I also have that other test. I am going to pass that back. Um, either today or not today. Okay. Um, so, um, so, that's that, yo. No, so the stuff that we did on Friday was the area between two curves that's not, that's not going to be on there. Um, so, yes? Um, if you have like an old version calculator, can you like bring a piece of paper to like pass the function? Like for, what? Like oh, if you're, if you're a classic man, then you just have to learn how to do things on classic mode. Same thing. I'll show you. It takes five seconds. Okay. It takes five seconds. Okay. Um, all right. So plan for today. Well, plan for today, besides this little conversation, is we are going to take, say, maybe 10 minutes and at your choice, go over any of these things. You might want to do a problem from this integral and Riemann sums packet. That's actually kind of what I want to do. We might want to do one of these problems from the AG practice problems in the FTC packet, um, possibly both if we go really fast. Then we're going to spend about 20 minutes going over the area homework, which I thought was quite difficult. Uh, and then we need to save 40 minutes for the end to learn a new thing, which will not be on the test, in which you will have to do some homework on like over the weekend. OK, so someone at like 10 o'clock, someone give me the like, yo, Mr. Rose. Like, Start the new thing pretty soon. To real soon. 10 o'clock or that? 10 to real 10 o'clock. Um, or like 10 o'clock. All right. Uh, is there something <coughs> of among this list that you would like to go over? Either on the, maybe on the integrals and Riemann sums packet, perhaps on the review packet, or perhaps on the, on the, just, I don't know, something. I feel like we should, yeah. Can you kind of explain how, how we should derive an integral from a Riemann sum? Yeah, I thought we could do that. There's this one problem. Which uh, that's which is from that packet called integrals and Riemann sums, which I think is really awesome and kind of like worth talking about. Uh, and it's um, from ooh, sorry from page three, um, and it's this one. It's this one that says the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals one to n of root. 1 over n squared, 1 plus uh, 2i over n. OK, so this problem is kind of awesome. And if you fully understand this, then you really understand calculus. Because I think it's quite tricky and abstract and sort of interesting. And I hopefully it will bring a bunch of things together. Um, so this is the limit of a sum. So I suspect that this is going to be some kind of integral. OK, well, let's figure out what's integral. First, there's one thing which I can do just straight off the bat, which is kind of obvious-ish to make this, yeah. Take out a 1 over n 
squared. Yeah, right. This one over n squared is just sitting there mischievously yeah. under the radical, but really I want that to be a one over n, and that's going to be my like my delta x kind of ish, right? So this is really like the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n times the sum from i equals one to n of root one plus uh, two i over n. Okay. It is at this point that we have to just kind of start thinking. And what makes this problem kind of exciting is that there's not just one way to do this. Um, and I don't know, when you see this, so you have to kind of look at this and just think like, all right, what does this look like to me? Well, it looks like, it looks like this is like my delta x-ish, I'll just say. And it looks like this is like, these are like, I'm adding up a bunch of things. So those things I'm adding up must be y values. Um, so what does it look like to function? Yeah, Will, you need to wake up. So you need to stand, because you're falling asleep. You stand up, stay standing for the rest of the class. Good. All right, um, so what is the function? OK, he says root x. Other thoughts? <laughs> there are no thoughts in the entire rest of the room. So please don't call any thoughts. Yeah, later. The left bound is 1. OK, wait, uh, hold on. Um, so wait, he, so hold on. Richard Chen looks at this, and personally, he sees this as the root x function. Is that what you guys all did? No. So if not, speak up. Aha. Uh -huh. So yeah, so Michelle says, and there's no, there's no one right answer to this problem, she looks at this and she sees this as root 1 plus uh, 2x. Why does she see root 1 plus 2x? Well, Michelle, explain your logic, if you can. Yeah. She's saying, well, if I sort of am taking temporarily my 1 over n as being like delta x, because it's sort of sitting there in the delta x position, right? Um, then, then this is kind of like, then it, it appears as if I'm like sort of scooting over each time by i over n. So if I'm scooting over each time by i over n, then according to her, it just looks like this, that this is the relevant function. OK, let's take that idea and like explore it and see where, and see where it takes us. Um, well, I can graph uh, root 1 plus 2x. It's going to look like uh, root x, except it's going to be, uh, it's going to start over here like negative a half or something. And it's going to kind of do something like that. All right, and now I just have to sort of start like doing stuff and just kind of see what happens. This is my actual expectation of you is that you sort of draw a picture and sort of think it out. So um, when i is 1, what's the first number which I appear to be plugging into this function? Uh, sorry, what's the first number I'm plugging into the function? <laughs> 1 over n, I think you mean, right? Yeah. yeah, 1 over n, right? The first, when i is 1, I'm plugging in 1 over n. So there's like 1 over n. What's the next number I'm plugging into this function? 2 over n. Um, right, if I plug in 2 over n, then I'm like, that is, that is what happens when i is 2, right? And then I plug in like 3 over n. So things like seem to be kind of working out, right? This, again, this is the function uh, f of x equals root 1 plus 2x. If I plug 1 over n in there, I get 1 plus 2 over n, which is what happens when i is 1. If I plug 2 over n into this function, I get 1 plus uh, 4 over n, which is what happens when i is 2. So it's all like matching up and fitting the pattern and everything's good. Are you guys kind of with me? OK, so and I can even draw in the rectangles. Uh, and stuff, um, and so you're sort of like doing the whole problem backwards. Uh, is this the kind of thing you wanted to talk about? Yeah. I hope. Okay. And now, what's the last number which I plug into this function? Or when I, what's the last number I plug into the sigma? One. Well, n, right? So when I plug in n, so I'm going to have like dot dot dot. The last number I'm going to plug in is. Um, yeah. This is going to be n over n, which. Uh, for our purposes is just like 1, right? Uh, well, it, is, it just is 1. And so when I'm, I'm going to get like root 3 or something. So if I do all of this, 
uh, I am going to get uh, like this kind of situation. Okay, after all this thinking and drawing and checking and matching, I have concluded, Michelle, so what's your conclusion? This Riemann sum is what? Yeah, and that's right, and I like that. Okay, and of course, if I, I don't know if I actually asked you to answer this question or not, but if the goal was to find the limit, then we would then just do this integral and we'd get an answer. Everybody with me? All right, so now, before we continue, uh, and make sure we're like in frame, what I would like, or before I do this interval, what I would like to do now is pursue a different way of thinking about this. A different way of thinking about this is, um, to maybe do what um, what <coughs> Richard Chen said, though he did something actually different on his paper, um, and said, and so I'll rewrite this. This is this the same limit. I'm going to do the same problem over again in a different way, and hopefully then learn something. So this is the sum from i equals one to n of root of one plus two i rem. Well, other people might look at this same Riemann sum and say, to me, it looks like the function is um, root x. Did anyone do it this way? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Okay, good. That's perfectly fine, uh, I guess. You just have to have the appropriate picture. So if the function is root x, then what is the form of the things which I appear to be plugging into the function? Like things of the form like 1 plus 2i over n or whatever, right? So what's the first number that I plug into this g function? 1 plus 2 one plus two over n. So we've seen things like this before, right? So over here, um, so that's like one, I guess. And then the first, the first guy is one plus two over n. What's the next number which I'm plugging into the function? One plus four over n. Next number. Yeah, one plus six over n, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And where do I appear? To, where do I stop? What's my last um, when i is n? Three. Yeah, 1 plus 2n over n, otherwise known as 3. Okay, so, so far this seems okay and everything. Um, so things are happening, but something is kind of a little bit weird about this. What's a little bit weird about this? Yoni. On the drawing, your delta x is 2 over n, whereas in the, how you wrote it out, it's 1 over n. Yeah, this is the key, this is the key point. What, this is a perfectly fine way to partition this interval. In fact, we've done things exactly like this before. But what is delta x in this situation? 2 over n. 2 over n. I mean, there's only one right answer to that question, right? The way we've set this up, the way we set it up such that the sample points that are being plugged into this function take the form 1 plus 2 over n, 1 plus 4 over n, which is, which is what we're forced to use it, do it this way, if this is our function, then uh, delta x is 2 over n. Okay, so, and then Yoni says this is a problem because this is supposed to be delta x, right? So technically, this, this Riemann sum is not an integral yet until we make sure that this thing is the correct delta x. And so what do we have to do? I feel like we did this once before in class, maybe, or maybe not. What do we do now? Yeah, I need to make this a 2 and undo the damage with a 1 half. So I'm sort of like, I'm sort of like fixing the delta x like inside the Riemann sum. Okay, and if we do it this way, do we have a nice like shot of both of these methods because I want to compare and contrast them now. Um, if, we do it, if we do it this way, then what is this Riemann sum if we do it Richard Chen's way, although this is not actually what he did on his paper. This would be the integral from, or you tell me. One half times one the integral half from one to three. Times the integral from? One to three. One to three. Root of root x. Is that right? Could that also be the same? Could that also be the correct answer to this problem? I think so. And actually, Shayar, here comes the cool part. All right. Suppose now we were going to actually do this integral. Um, well, if we're actually going to do this integral, then we should probably do a substitution, or at least that's the clean way to do it, right? 
So if I'm going to do a substitution, I'm going to let u be 1 plus 2x. And then if I let u be 1 plus 2x, then um, du is 2 dx. And thus, I must stick in a 2, although I'm doing it in the integral here, and undo the damage with a 1 half. And not only do I have this new 1 half out here, but then I have to change the limits of integration when I change them from x value to u value. So what's u of 0? 1. 1. And what's u of 1? 3. 3. And suddenly, I produce the exact same integral that I have over here. So this actually proves that the two are the same. So uh, many things are being learned here. Lathrop, on the one hand, this shows that the same uh, the same Riemann sum can be expressed as two different integrals. But of course, in some sense, you already knew that, right? Because the entire process of performing substitution on integrals is sort of like rewriting an integral into another integral um, with a different variable. And sort of when you're really, this sort of also sort of shows on some level what you're really doing when you're doing these substitutions from one integral to another. You're sort of like going into the Riemann sum, stretching things out, and then adding in like a correction factor for the amount that you stretch it. Um, does this kind of bring things together to some extent for you guys? I think this is a good problem. Okay, Aliyah, um, I feel like that's all the time. Do we have time for more? Is anyone like desperate for like another thing from that list? Or are we, good? Are we kind of good? Oh, someone had a question about, um, yeah, it was you. Um, so when I'm proving a relative max with the first derivative test, do I say, like, what's like, the give me, this? Give me one of the problems. What's the specific sentence that I say when give I'm Give me a problem. Oh, since, uh, since uh, the derivative of max changes from problem. Say the problem by, by five D. Five? Well, they're all called five. Well, no. Two of them are called. You mean page three? Yeah. Oh. Except, that's not a relative max. I don't know if that's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. The gravel problem. Someone like the gravel problem? John. Sure. Is this the class where I finished the gravel problem or where I didn't finish the gravel problem? Oh, uh, uh, it was John. So I, I sent you guys like a little three minute video. Oh no, we finished it the next day, I think, yeah, right? Yeah. John. Yeah, we didn't pay that day, though. Okay, so John, watch a video. Um, all right, anyone desperate for anything else on that list? Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. Why here? Why here? Why here? <laughs> Uh, I, it's the integral from 1 to 3 because um, I just like start at 1. Uh, I start at 1 because once I make the decision, I think you missed it. Once I make the decision that I'm going to think of the function as being root x, then all the things I'm plugging into the function are like of the form 1 plus something. So like I have to draw my rectangles here. It's a really it's like a th it's like a three step process. It's like look at the Riemann sum, decide what function it is, then draw a picture. Draw a picture such that you have a bunch of rectangles, which uh, the sum of them is that Riemann sum. And once you have the picture, it's pretty clear from this picture that we're integrating from one to three. Wait, so are you just plugging in like i zero? Yeah, I plug in i equals 1, I get 1 plus 2 over n. I plug in i equals 2, I get 1 plus 4 over n. That's exactly what it is. All right, yeah, later. My question wasn't about the travel problem. Uh, okay, what was it? Okay, so when we're working with the first derivative test, do I say the derivative of f changes from positive to negative, uh, the function goes from increasing to decreasing, or the slope goes from positive to negative? Because I remember on a test you took off points because I said it somewhere. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You're, you're going like way back to like March or whatever. Yeah. Okay, okay going way back to March. Uh, if I have uh, some function and its derivative changes sign at 2, then you just say uh, since f prime changes sign. From negative to positive, uh, po positive um, at x equals 2, uh, s has a relative min at x equals 2. Okay. Okay, good enough. Okay, good. Uh, take out the homework due today, which I thought was kind of hard. Um, it was on area. Let's do some of...
these problems now. You say maybe like three or four of them. Um, so yeah, you can either like pick up the whole camera and move it over there in between Brittany and Aliyah, or you can just like do, do something. Go figure it out. Um, so, uh, let's do some, uh, Aliyah, let's do some of these homework problems. Let's do like maybe like one easy one and then a couple of hard ones. I'm not on it. And we're going to go until forgetting something. Test maybe the rotation. Go over this homework. Talk about what's on the test. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, so, 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 so. Section 6, 7, 1, 7, 1, yeah. So I thought we could do maybe like, I don't know, what ones do you want to do? 93. 90, did I sign 93? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I signed 93 and 94? Yeah. Yikes. 94 was hard. Uh, okay, we can do 93 and 94. What else? Something I thought um, 75 was kind of hard. Mr. Rose? Yo. How do you tilt the camera more up? How do you tilt it up? Yeah, the frame isn't wide. Um, yeah, just like just zoom out a little bit. One of these just needs to be loosened. I don't. I don't know. It's like a ten dollar tripod. Uh, I can't remember. It's probably this one, right? That makes sense. But but it's wrong. I forget. Maybe it's do that. I don't know. Someone figure. Ah, oh, there we go. Just kind of push it harder. Okay, good. All right. Um. 75, 93, 94, what else? I thought we could do um, 73, it was kind of a cool problem, even though it wasn't hard. And can, we, can we do maybe like one easy one? Oh. Wait, wait, I have a question. 69, yeah, request? 73, yes. Okay, wait, can I just like. 13? I was so happy. Yeah, and then we can even just do 13. Go ahead. Um, so, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Can we do 6 problems in 14 minutes? We can. Not, probably. Um, Brittany, 13 was the first problem I assigned, but in some ways it sort of like, in some ways gives like a little bit of everything. Um, 13 says, take the equation x equals 4 minus y squared and x equals y minus 2. Uh, sketch the region, and um, I'll even like give it to you in the book, and find the area um, of the intersection of that region uh, doing it both with respect to x and with respect to y. So, um, okay, how do we do this? Well, you have to be a little bit smart and comfortable graphing sideways parabolas, I guess. So, first of all, I have x equals y minus 2. So, that's the same thing as y equals x plus 2, right? So, that's like this. Um, yeah. And then... Uh, x equals 4 minus y squared. Well, that's going to be a sideways parabola opening left um, with when y is plus or minus 2, x is going to be 0. So that means that there are y, uh, x, y intercepts of 2 and negative 2. And it's when x is, um, when y is 0, x is 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So my sideways parabola looks kind of something like this. And then the first thing to do is to figure out what actually kind of region I have by finding the points of intersection. So if I set 4 minus um, y squared equal to y minus 2, then I get, let's see, um, I get y squared plus y uh, minus 6 equals 0. So that's y plus 3. Um, y minus 2, so I have a y-intercept at negative 3 and at 2. So that means that these curves are going to intersect at something comma negative 3 and something comma 2. Okay, well I already knew that they intersected both at 0, 2. Uh, when y is negative 3, x is negative 5. Okay, so from that, I now conclude that these curves are going to intersect uh, here at negative 5, negative 3, and at 0, 2. So this is all you would go through if you were not given the picture. 
Um, all right, and the region that I'm trying to find the area of is this one. Um, and we have basically two options to do it with respect to x and to do it with respect to y. Well, if you do it with respect to x, it turns out to be kind of a drag, right? Because if you do it with respect to x, no single uh, representative rectangle is going to suffice. So this curve is going to be the curve, well, if x is 4 minus y squared, then I guess like y is root 4 minus x, right? y is root 4 minus x. And then, um, yeah. Oh, and then this y is going to be like a separate function. It's going to be like negative root 4 minus x. Everybody with me? OK, good. So if I, want to, if I wanted to find this integral with respect to x, I would have to draw a representative rectangle here. And then if I'm being a little savvy, I guess I could draw, I could just do just this one and then like multiply by 2. So I claim that this green area can be represented by the sum of two integrals from negative 5 to 0 of line minus upside down uh, square root. In other words, oh, and if this is the line x equals y minus 2, then it's also the line y equals x plus 2. So every rectangle from negative 5 to 0 has, is, is bounded by, or has height, um, x plus 2 minus, um, minus negative root 4 minus x. This doesn't look like very much fun. Uh, plus, and I have to split up into two, two integrals, this is the only way to do it, um, this region, which I'm going to be smart and say that that's just twice the integral from 0 to 4, of root 4 minus x dx yeah, in the book. I wanted you to actually do this. Um, I kind of like don't feel like it because in the interest of time. But um, this, do you see on kind of what I did? Right, and this is going to be like, I don't know, this is going to be like not fun. Or fun, depending on what kind of person you are. But the, um, Richard, can you raise the backboard? Uh, but the cool way to do it is to be smart and to recognize that this is a perfect opportunity for sideways rectangles. If I partition my interval in a different way um, with sideways rectangles, now a single representative rectangle will suffice to find the area of the entire region. So alternatively, this problem can be done with sideways rectangles. And now what I have to do is just come up with an expression which represents the uh, height of this rectangle. And the height, um, this is the curve, uh, this is the curve x equals or this is the curve x equals 4 minus y squared. And so, uh, and this is the curve x equals y minus 2. So um, the whole point of that is if you give me an arbitrary y value, so if that's like, I'm not to write it there, but if you, give me, if you give me a particular y value, then this is the formula for its x coordinate, and this is the formula for the x, for the x coordinate of the line. And thus, the height of this rectangle will vary as y varies. It's always going to be uh, 4 minus y squared, which is the x-coordinate of the right endpoint of the rectangle, minus uh, 